Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Yang Yong Zhang. Um, today I'm going to present our work named Practical Speech Reuse Prevention in Voice Driven Services. Uh, this is a work, um, this is a joint work between Texas NAM um, and Visa Research. It's partly done during my internship uh, in Visa Research. Um, it is my honor to work with uh, Samprit Malehe, uh, Jian Wei, and my advisor, Guo Fei Gu. So in the past few decades, uh, we have been using uh, different user interfaces. For example, in, in the very beginning, uh, we were using um, the punch card machines, right? And then we are not, we are having uh, terminals, and then we have the, the GUI. And nowadays, we are using more sophisticated uh, web or mobile interfaces. Uh, gradually, uh, people are not trying something different, um, like the voice user interface or VUI, and also the augmented reality or AR. Right? And in this work, and in, in today's talk, right, we want to focus on the voice-driven services, or VDS. To, in, to, in, to introduce you some background about BDS, uh, we want to start with the smart speakers. Um, nowadays, many, many people are using the smart speakers. Uh, so what we do is we uh, simply speaking out a voice command, trying to control the device to uh, conduct uh, like certain things. For example, there are different services you can reach to through these smart speakers. Um, for Best Buy, uh, what you can do is uh, you can uh, simply speak out some voice command uh, and through this smart speaker, you can get your other status or sometimes you can um, simply uh, purchase something, right? So that's, that's, so that's very interesting. Uh, and then uh, we can also use our voice command to control the uh, smart home devices using this smart speaker. Um, and you can check your PayPal balance um, um, like uh, through your voice command. And this is not just the smart speaker. Um, there are different other scenarios uh, we can leverage uh, in the voice-driven services. For example, uh, we have the grocery stores, we can have the coffee shops, we have our cars, uh, many of the uh, modern cars are going to have you uh, using a voice command to control certain services like uh, mapping or other stuff. So to uh, further motivate our work, I right, want to introduce about the voice payment. Um, nowadays, Google can allow you uh, to purchase items uh, using this so-called voice match. What it does is uh, it's trying to uh, check your voice point Right, and then to making sure that you are you. Um, and through that way, uh, you can do some critical services. Right? Um, and according to a survey, um, people are actually comfortable doing these uh, uh, voice payment thing. Um, for example, for the low value purchases like the grocery shopping or the uh, purchasing lunch, uh, people are actually uh, comfortable doing that. And then how are you going to pay your lunch uh, uh, using a VDS, right? So as a user, uh, you're going to just speak out a sentence or several keywords as a voice commands. Right? And then the VDS device is going to record your um, voice command and then send it back to um, the uh, backend like processing. It's going to verify your voice print and return to you certain response like your uh, purchase is verified or not, right? If everything goes well, right, then you'll get your lunch. So what can go wrong? <laughs> um, so previously we are talking about the audible or inaudible voice command attacks. Um, and many are very sophisticated attacks like uh, blocking attacks using the high frequency uh, voice command to bypass the, the security check. Um, but in here, we are uh, simply talking some, uh, uh, something very simple, right? Um, it's the replay or reuse attacks. 
thinking about uh, you are talking to a VDS device. Um, a the people can uh, just stand, it's like say beside you um, and then record your speech and then reuse it. And what we find is that uh, current VDS uh, devices or any VDS cannot prevent such uh, replay or reuse. And in this work, we want to focus on the speech reuse. Uh, and this is basically means like um, we focus on the replay for the um, same service or devices. Uh, you can refer to our uh, paper for more details. And uh, what is the key idea behind our work, right? So what we observe is when a user is talking to a device, uh, the loudspeaker of uh, these VDS devices is in idle mode actually. So what we were wondering is, um, can we leverage that idle loudspeaker to do something uh, maybe for the security purpose? So what we propose is to embed uh, an acoustic nonce right, into the acoustic like, space or channel um, and then making it um, session specific so that uh, we can ensure the speech freshness. This is um, similar to the web or uh, mobile uh, nonce, right? We have been using in different protocols. So um, in here, the difference is now, uh, we're trying to use it um, in the form of a, a, like a, a acoustic waves. Uh, and then we're going to use the, the the loudspeaker at the time of uh, user interactions. Um, and then what we are trying to do is to uh, let the microphone record whatever you are speaking out and then checking whether there's an, an embedded nonce or not. Um, and then using the loudspeaker to embed the nonce. So this is what we are trying to do. Um, but there are several research questions we want to answer. Um, and the, the core of it is how to design such a core signals. And then the first uh, sub research question we want to answer is how to embed uh, such a core signals. Um, because now we are actually talking about um, acoustic waves. And previously, what we were actually talking about is uh, different digital numbers, like the random numbers. Right? So how are you going to encode or decode the um, acoustic nonce? Right? Um, what we are uh, learning from is the, the uh, communication theory. And then what we realize is um, we can modulate and demodulate um, these like uh, digital numbers. Um, into um, acoustic uh, signals. And then once, so once you have these uh, acoustic signals, you can play them out uh, through the loudspeaker. And then how are you going to detect uh, these signals, right? Um, because um, simply playing out is not going to make it work. We also need to reliably uh, detect all the signals being embedded. Um, and we can talk more details about that. Um, and so uh, besides um, um, encoding and decoding, we also want to make sure whatever we are using as the acoustic nonce is difficult to remove. Um, this is because um, some malicious people can simply record uh, the speech that with the nonce embedded and then try to clean it out, right? And then produce some clean speech and uh, continue doing uh, the replay or the reuse attacks. So we want to prevent that. Um, and some techniques we are uh, trying to use is the frequency hopping space, like uh, spectrum. Um, and that is um, some classic or famous techniques that's being used um, in different other uh, domains to uh, prevent such scenarios. And next, uh, we want to talk about our, our framework details. Um, first, we name it ALS. Um, so um, this is going to uh, conduct acoustic nonce embedding and uh, 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 like uh, decoding. So first, um, say a user is going to uh, start the session by uh, using the wake up word, right? And then uh, the VDS device is going to uh, get like triggered by this wake up word and then the nonce is going to be being like applied. The next thing is like uh, um, the user is going to uh, actually speak out the voice commands as being protected by our system. 
like confirm my payment, right? And, and then all of these protected voice command is going to be mixed with the nonce. Um, and then our system is going to detect whether these nonce are properly embedded or not, and then return to the user um, a certain response like, okay, your order is confirmed or um, it is not, right? And for example, if we um, say detect this nonce, uh, there are like say two nonce being embedded in, um, in this voice command. So that probably means um, someone else already uh, recorded uh, some previous um, voice command and then trying to reuse it here. Um, that's going to return to you a, a no response, right? And then if everything uh, goes properly and you are being verified and your embedded nonce is uh, fresh, then we can continue the VDS processing. Um, so after talking about the Atlas uh, workflow, we want to talk about uh, the some uh, detailed architecture, right? So um, in here, uh, the so the first thing I want to talk about is the regular uh, VDS pipeline, which is uh, in the lower part of this figure. So first, for any VDS devices, uh, you will be having the microphone, right? So um, to either like uh, trigger the service or simply record anything that is interested to the system. Um, and then you will be having the speech and the speaker recognition um, to either recognize what you are talking about or to verify uh, your identity and saying like, you are you, right? And then after having uh, the speech and the speaker recognition, what you are having is the, the backend processing. Um, this is going to process your uh, voice command or your say request and return to you uh, some certain response. And then um, once the response is being generated, you will be having the, uh, the playback devices or the loudspeaker um, and to play back the, the response to the user. So this is a regular uh, VDS pipeline. And then IOLIS is working as an um, overlay tool or a framework. Right, so um, in the beginning, we can treat it as a black box. Right? So it takes one um, input from the microphone and then it will like produce two output uh, like I'm showing here. So the input is going to be the uh, recorded speech. Uh, we can talk about more details. Um, and then what it outputs, uh, there are like two things. One thing um, is the, the nonce that is being generated. Right. And then the second thing is it's going to inform the backend processing that uh, whether the nonce is properly embedded or not. So there are two response. And then for the uh, detailed modules, right? Uh, there are five modules in LS. First is the, the, the nonce uh, generation uh, and also the nonce de like detection, right? So once uh, the nonce is being generated, it can be used to uh, mix with some other like speech and then produce back. Um, but there are uh, there are also two other modules like the initialization and also the optimization. These are more uh, being used to configure the system properly. Um, having talked about the, the architecture, uh, all these modules are actually trying to solve two challenges. The first is the, the reliability. So how can you rel uh, reliably embed in, uh, let's say, acoustic nuns, right, into the channel? It's like what we previously said, um, um, embedding the uh, um, acoustic wave is not like uh, previously, uh, and let's say, digital nuns, right? So you have to deal with um, the uh, complicated over-the-air acoustic uh, channel, um, and then it can be impacted by different factors um, like uh, the people going through or the other uh, environmental factors uh, like the tables around or simply there are like noises, right? Um, and then uh, there are also uh, things like uh, you need to reliably um, embed that nonce so make sure uh, when people are trying to reuse um, some old uh, speech, right? Um, these nonce are going to be preserved in the recording. And then once it's being played to the VDS uh, device that with LS, right? It, we will know there are previous sessions, right? There are previous nonce there. 
Um, and the second challenge is the, the impressibility. So um, you can imagine to embed in us, some simple things we can do is just to play very loud um, and sometimes very uh, noisy uh, like signals, it can be very reliable, right? But this is not something what we want. What we want is to uh, make sure everything we embed is um, as imperceptible as possible. It should just like a very um, like um, low volume noise, right? That's the ideal thing and no one can recognize that thing. So uh, this is a challenge we want to, uh, th so these are the challenges we want to solve. Um, and then how are we going to solve these, right? So what we do is we try to uh, model uh, these two challenges into an um, optimization problem. So what do I mean by that? Right? So uh, because when you are trying to produce the cost announce, we're actually dealing with uh, different parameters, right? So uh, like the, what is the operating frequency for these nuns? You want, maybe you want to play it at 8K uh, frequency or 10K, what are the frequency and what is the amplitude of your wave that is being played out uh, by the loudspeaker and what is the bit rate? Remember, we are uh, modulate, we're going to modulate uh, these like digital nuns into the waves, right? And then um, what is the bit rate, right? Like, um, how many uh, digits are going to be embedded in every second, right? Um, and then all of these things are going to um, be optimized uh, using the following equation. Right? Um, and then this optimization equation simply means um, we want to minimize uh, the bit error rate. We want to uh, uh, like um, to to like produce something that has very low error rate. And also at the same time, we want to making sure. Uh, that uh, it is as imperceptible as possible. So you can check more details in our paper for uh, uh, like uh, how we model uh, this optimization problem. Um, and then um, one of the key thing we want to talk about is um, you can see like we are actually dealing with some uh, uh, complicated uh, optimization problems that has different parameters. And then, so the thing we're using is uh, so-called the differential evolution. It's a gradient free um, like method, meaning um, it is a perfect solution to, 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 to deal with uh, like systems with, with like uh, many different parameters. Um, and then this uh, differential evolution is going to generate uh, many like diverse candidates and then to converge them uh, like uh, gradually towards a point that you can find the optimal solutions. For example, in here we can be able to uh, um, like decide uh, different uh, like frequencies you want to use for different environment, right? Uh, and then um, one of the advantages like it does not require some like prior knowledge set uh, about what are the environment, what are the message you're using. So uh, we believe uh, and we have tested, so and it becomes a perfect solution for our uh, uh, LS optimization. Um, so we have been talking about um, how we design um, the LS, right? And then we want to test it out. Um, so we have been tested out like uh, um, both in like a theoretical way and also in a, a, a practical way. So there are three uh, basic metrics we want to uh, like check out. The first is uh, the performance. So can LS work in real world, right? So it's simply, can it work? Right? And the second thing is, we want to see the robustness. So what is the impact on, on the speaker and the speech recognition systems? Because uh, LS is in um, through the overlay uh, framework um, on top of VDS. So we want to make sure some uh, other regular services is going to be conducted properly uh, with LS being uh, deployed. Um, and then also the last thing we want to check is the human perception. Uh, like we said, we want to making well, we want to make sure um, it is as imperceptible as possible. So can human notice that? Right? So this is a simple question with the answer. Um, and then we uh, design a, a user study with 120 uh, participants to to answer this question. Okay. So um, how are we going to test it in real world? Right? We have set up our uh, devices. Um, so it's like 
we create our own VDS device um, in, in three different uh, locations. One is the conference room, one is the dining hall, and one is the, the vehicle environment. So we want to uh, mimic uh, how users are going to use right, these things um, like uh, the ALS or the VDS devices in real world. For the conference room, like uh, you may simply use it for uh, to having a meeting or it's more related to quiet room. And then for the dining hall, it's like when you're going to a coffee shop, right? It is quite noisy and you want to purchase item uh, using uh, like the voice payment, right? So that's uh, the second scenario. And then the last thing is going to uh, like simulate how you would be doing the payment in your car, right? And then we, we, we do it uh, in a gas station. It is going to be mimicked uh, mimicking the uh, semi uh, outdoor environment. So what is the performance? So in here you can check like we used the bit error rate and force access rate and the force rate like rate to to evaluate uh, different uh, environment for LS. Um, and then uh, so the key thing here we care about is the the, uh, the working distance. So for the conference room, uh, we can make it work up to four meters, right? So, and then it was like having a zero bear rate and a zero FAR and zero FR uh, in one meter and then similar to two and three. Um, and then for the uh, dining hall, that is the, the, the noisy environment, we are um, going to make it work like um, up to two meters. And then for the car, it is something different because in a car, uh, you, you, you don't have uh, uh, like four meters range to test. So uh, in what we tested, uh, we only have like a, a point, point 0.7 like uh, meters range to, to test. And then we see our uh, system is working uh, perfectly. And we also want to test uh, out like uh, whether our knots can be removed very easily and also whether it can uh, work with the, the uh, speaker verification system, right? Whether uh, it's going to be disruptive uh, with uh, some regular services. And then you can see we tested like the resampling, the amplitude compression, filtering, additive noise, and lossy compression, uh, things like that. And then what we realized, um, it can work uh, just fine. And then you can see, uh, for example, and it is compatible with the, the uh, speech recognition system. Uh, it, it's not it's not going to significantly uh, downgrade the service according to our uh, evaluation. And then we also uh, test our system with 120 participants. So uh, we simply uh, play these like audios uh, to these participants to, uh, to 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 test whether they can uh, notice uh, these like. Uh, uh, nuns, right? So according to our um, like um, evaluation, we see that uh, most of the people are 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 like uh, they like like treat these nuns as like imperceptible or non-disruptive. Okay, as a summary, right? um, so in today's talk, um, I uh, like presented our uh, system named uh, Aeolus. It is a security overlay to prevent the uh, speech reuse on uh, protected uh, VDS uh, devices or services, right? Um, and uh, um, in LS, we uh, model this acoustic nonce uh, propagation or uh, inviting decoding processes and optimization problem uh, with two considerations. One is the reliability, one is the imperceptibility. Um, and we also conducted the real world evaluation uh, to show that LS can work uh, perfectly, right? Uh, and then uh, as a plus, right, we, uh, we show a user study with 100 subjects uh, to, to, to further show it's, it's either imperceptible or uh, non-disruptive. Um, okay, lastly, the takeaways. So we, we, we want to say we have certain limitations, right? So if someone's getting the uh, plain re like recording without the protection, uh, they may bypass this, but we argue that this is unlikely. You can check uh, our paper why this is true. Uh, and then there's a DOS attack. Simply many people can play different random noise around our system, right? Then it's not going to work. But 
think of that, it's very easy to detect. I, I, I like actually. So, uh, um, so we don't think that kind of uh, like 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 attacks are practical. Um, and what can be done in the future? Right. So there could be like different uh, ways of embedding uh, acoustic noise. Right. So it's not just the the, the like one, two, three, like inviting ways. Uh, and we use it as like frequency-based one. You can use amplitude ones uh, and different other ways. And then um, our work uh, like leveraged the loudspeaker when it's in idle mode, right? So what else you can do with this idle uh, loudspeaker, right? So this is open question. Um, so having said that, uh, uh, that's all my uh, presentation. I'm happy to take uh, questions.